I am actually a Columbia Business School alum from the class of 1989. And uh, I actually began my career in uh, sales and trading at JP Morgan, and also where I became the MBA recruiter uh, for the sales and trading division for a time, but then made a complete career switch into the media and entertainment industry where I worked at 20th Century Fox for many years doing international marketing for film and a number of other things within media before just feeling the urge to return to the alma mater that is Columbia Business School in a career advising capacity. I'm currently the executive director of international at the Career Management Center. And I work very closely with, I advise all students, but very closely with international students and uh, and also with uh, particularly with international employers and the one thing that i think i do bring to the advising uh, that i started here about eight years ago is the possibility of the fact that what you choose to do immediately out of business school will be wonderful but it's really about the benefit of this you know mba education over the arc of one's career that allows you to also make transitions along the way and how you can leverage both a, a network that you may develop here at the school, but also those professional development kind of in career development tools that you learn are, are always going to be valuable for life. I think it's, it's incredibly important. I mean, it's part of what drove me to this role. Uh, if I wasn't having, you know, some uh, access to students on a daily basis, I don't think that my role would be as rewarding to me personally. But I, I, I and my other advisors in our office are very invested in the students that we meet. And we very consciously try to meet them early. We actually provide welcome advising kind of support even prior to their arrival over the summer. And so, and learn a little bit about their career goals, uh, what they know, what don't they know, uh, how to get them to think about what's coming up and how to maybe best prepare. And then, but it's also about watching that incredible journey over the course of their time at Columbia Business School, because oftentimes what they, they might think initially they may be wanting to do can, can evolve over the time based off of what they get exposed to that they may never have even thought about previously. And so seeing that journey and watching them at graduation but from where they came from, it's, it's very, very rewarding. And then we also hear from alumni after the fact who keep in touch and actually also provide job opportunities to uh, in current students. Literally this, this week I heard from somebody from Disney streaming services to Oracle's cloud division. I think that it's, it's a, a great deal of, it's not just preparation from a, a, how to conduct a job search perspective, but I think it's across the entire MBA experience at Columbia Business School. So it is very much about definitely being provided with the tools, the skills, both hard and kind of softer and from a leadership development, from communication skills, working effectively in collaboration with diverse teams, the kinds of things that you can get both in the classroom with the learning team to your student run clubs, associations, where you can take leadership roles to actually even leadership roles through the Career Management Center, one part of our advising support actually is like peer advising. And we have basically a cohort of 70 second year students who, who are essentially trained by our office. They also hold appointments. Think of them like peer advisors for careers. And people are, you know, clamoring to do this. It is a very much actually a, an interview process in a way. And in some way, we can't even take all of the students who have an interest in doing this. So I think it's a matter of preparation and from a education tools perspective, but then it's also leadership opportunities that go across the school. 
and the sharp elbows that you might think could be out there in the world or, or some may think would be within a business school where everybody may be competitive. It's really not something that I see very often at Columbia Business School and it's very much more about the concept of community and, and giving back. And you know, once people through their first year, for example, go through an experience and maybe a recruiting experience that, that could have the ups and the downs and then a wonderful outcome in the end, they are very happy and want to share um, their experience and oftentimes their contacts with the first year students. I mean, I think it's best to, to maybe put it a little bit into context, even from advising support um, at the school. So we have this thing called the ACE advising kind of model, advisors, coaches, and executives. Um, so there's the full-time advisors in our office, uh, like, like me, and we will meet students from day one all throughout across a whole series of issues. They have their kind of peer advising support through the CMC Fellows Program, which is what I was just referring to. We also have our CMC coaches. Think of them as a cohort of 45 uh, alumni practitioners who give their time. They will do one-on-one -on -one appointments, some group sessions marketed to students by industry, and they will, will meet them. But then we also have the largest executives and residents uh, program here at Columbia Business School, where we're talking about sort of C-suite level individuals, retired, semi-retired, who volunteer their time. It is an incredible resource that students can talk about basically the arc of one's career across an incredible variety of industries. And, and very recently I met a student um, who made it her mission to meet, I think, all 20 plus uh, executives and residents, because when do you get that really kind of free access to some of the most successful business leaders? I, I mean, if you think about there are a variety of drivers even to what they may choose to do coming directly out of business school. It's very convenient and it's very important, of course, for so many to get that return on investment. Um, and so, you know, compensation coming out of business school is absolutely one element that may be to some degree a driver. But I would say Columbia Business School students have a variety of other, I guess, you know, lenses that they look through when they're thinking about what to do next uh, after the degree. You know, absolutely affirms culture and the people that they're going to be working with. So they take really time to meet them prior to making decisions. Um, maybe training and development opportunities. Um, clearly, industry preferences, functional desires definitely matter. Uh, they will also think about skills build that could be skills that they will build beyond where they've come from previously that will also position them well, whether they grow within the organization they go to or actually would move on to other places that would find those skills of value. The, the thing that struck me a great deal is I constantly hear about the desire for impact and, you know, going to a place where they have a seat at the table, where what they do actually has an impact on, in some ways, the world, their customers, the, you know, and, and also aligning with the mission of the organization or that the, that organization's values also kind of mirror theirs. So there are, that's kind of what I mean by a variety of drivers and inputs that may go into the decision. The data is absolutely available publicly. You know, the 2021 employment report for Columbia Business School is out. And you can see that the median base salary of the, the students was 150,000 this um, for the 2021 graduates. There's also for many, uh, you know, signing bonuses, other guaranteed compensation on top of that. Um, what you will clearly see is, and you can very much see how it may differ and the ranges may differ by industry or maybe even potentially to some degree functional choice. 
So that would is something that people may consider. Uh, but just the thing to rest be rest assured of, I would say, is that employers hiring Columbia Business School talent are paying what is going to be competitive pay at the time for their industry, for you know their company, whether it be size, sector, all of the above. And so the, that is one way that students, if they're thinking about what they may be interested in and targeting, they can refer to some of the material that's out there about what they can potentially expect and plan accordingly. I do caution people to, to focus only on that. And I oftentimes you know, talk about, you know, there's so much that goes into how and, and why somebody may be professionally and personally fulfilled at an organization. And so, but we cannot deny that there is going to be, you know, an important element will always be compensation. I think it's, it's a matter of how you value the return as well. So, so clearly there's going to be, you know, the, the dollars and cents part of, here's a, the cost of an MBA education, plus the cost of my living expenses and everything coming out of that, and what will I be earning? And, and maybe the trajectory for growth is something that I would be looking at within the industry that you may be, be, may be seeking, because that is, you know, where you are immediately coming out, you know, it is, is not necessarily where you will end up. And I'm a perfectly great example of that, of, of how you make choices in your career too, for which, you know, your compensation becomes really primary. And maybe there's certain years where that's the case. And then other things shift in terms of some priorities. But I would say that the, the other piece to all of this is also going to be thinking the benefit of an MBA is really also about the network that you build. So, you know, from you know, the, the people that you've met at the school, but also the network that you will be creating at your, let's say, next employer, uh, so that the return is often going to be, you know, you know something that is not always about you can calculate in the in, in like a spreadsheet, but it's also about that ability to be upskilling through your education and being more and more valuable to employers in terms of where the market may be headed. I would say that if you look at where percentage-wise our students have, have gone, there's a roughly equal between, let's say, consulting and financial services broadly defined in probably roughly 35% of each. Within the financial services side, it's a really a mix between sell side and buy side that's just about equal. So investment banking is, is a very strong industry at Columbia Business School, but so is investment management. The world-renowned value investing program here at Columbia Business School is, is one contributor to that. But there's also sort of private equity, venture capital that is becoming also more and more uh, important and, uh, and, and where uh, students have interests. But I cannot uh, underestimate the, the rise of, I'd say, tech and maybe in the intersection with media. And so, you know, basically that's been about 17% or so of our students. And then the tail beyond that is very long and diverse. It, you know, whether it's going into real estate, and I would say that Columbia Business School has probably the most highly recognized real estate program amongst business schools, and uh, to healthcare program, to you know media and entertainment, you know it, we have a very large uh, cohort of students interested in that sector, but particularly at the intersection between media and tech. I think that that's a very interesting thing to look at because it is there are absolutely those you know relatively small percentage of students who might 100% commit to starting their own business coming directly out of business school but there is you know a history of Columbia business school students who have 
who really started and, you know, even in new, new sectors. I mean, uh, example could be like Robert Refkin from the class of 03. He started um, basically tech led real estate company Compass. Um, John Stein, who is probably well known for founding Betterment from the class of 09, really was an early uh, onset of fintech, right? Really bringing online tools to asset management or to Shazi Visram, who started a healthy organic foods company called Healthy um, Happy Baby that sold to Danone. And so we can go on and on, but I actually think that the, the piece to this is a lot of times people here at Columbia Business School also are working on a, an idea and can be leveraging resources like our Lang Center for Entrepreneurship that they may be um, building a plan against. They may not yet be ready to launch that. But I talked to so many students who have this goal that may be down the road a piece to be their own boss to start their own thing and they have a startup idea in their back pocket and maybe they're going out and getting some other kind of experience that may be building some skills that they think would be um, important before they even go off on their own. I think one of the things that, that I particularly love and is if people have come to business school with some concept of things that interest them, what they think they may want to do, and then we have somewhere to build off of and from. You know, there, it doesn't mean that everyone needs to know this is exactly it, but come doing some of your due diligence, talking to people across different industries, even before you arrive, is gonna really be helpful. You know, not coming in and saying, I don't know what I wanna do but having an idea of at least potential areas that you may want to explore further is really helpful. You know, that being said, there are going to be people that we meet very early on and we're like, wow, you've already done so much. You are right on track, you're this or that. And that's lovely and, and always love working with them. But from my perspective, um, part of the best thing we get involved in is to actually help people who may not have, you know, that toolkit yet, maybe even coming from very non-traditional prior MBA, you know, areas, you know, that they, 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 they don't even have all of these tools yet. I work a great deal as well with international students who may, even from a cultural perspective, may not be very used to you know, what is conducting a not only a, a job search that may be in the U.S., but a master's level job search or even doing networking, which is not something that's done in that country and watching us be able to work with them, guide them, watch them develop and see that journey. You know, a good example. So I have two things in my mind. Uh, one is an international student who I've met just early this year came in never having stepped foot in the U.S., came from India, and actually just kind of told me that he landed a internship. At, he basically came in having run his own startup and just landed an internship as a senior strategy consultant at IBM in the chief analytics office. Now, that journey of even just six months or less now was a big one for this individual but it's so rewarding to see also, you know, the smile on the face, but it's the look back. And I think the satisfaction of what they've been able to learn and apply. And I have another alum who's, who I had met many times and she came back later as an alum. And she said, you know, Mike, as I reflect on the whole job search and the whole thing and my MBA experience, she said, one of the things that I think I value the most that I learned was hustle and grit.